Howdy, AP Prego. It's Ms. Kosh. Um, this problem relates to our free response question number three. Uh, Mr. Passwater put this in his notes for section 3.1, but I think I'm going to do it with my classes a little bit later. Um, we're kind of setting the foundation for all things trig graphs, and then we're going to kind of do a whole little unit where we're really focusing on modeling um, so anyway, I'm making the video now, but I don't think my kids will actually, we'll use it in class, but not yet. Okay, so they're telling us there's a large clock on a wall. The clock has an eight inch uh, moving minute hand. Okay, so they've given, they've shown us the minute hand right here. The center of the clock is 120 inches directly above the floor. So this, this height above the floor from here down, I don't want to draw that because it's going to get too cluttered, um, is 120 feet. I lied, huh? wouldn't that be insane? 120 inches above the floor. At time zero, the minute hand is pointed directly up at, t, um, at the 12. Okay, so this point right here is time zero, and how high is it? Well, the middle was 120 inches off the ground, and then we're eight inches beyond that. So this height at that time is 128. Okay, so maybe I could have said, um, oh, I'm sorry, you couldn't see what I was doing. Um, maybe I should have said that h of 0 will be equal to 128. That would be a good notation. Then, okay, then they, let's see, what else do they tell us? The minute hand is pointed, okay, however, the clock is not working properly. Well, okay. The minute hand is moving twice as fast as it should. Well, that would be cool to see. Um, thus, the next time the minute hand points directly up is at time 30. So we could say h of 30 is equal that's not a 30, is equal to 128 also. It's at the same place. As the minute hand moves, the distance between the endpoints of the minute hand and the floor periodically decrease and increase. Okay, so this is moving in a periodic uh, fashion. So it's going to start to model <coughs> our sine, our cosine curve. Um, well, sine is cosine shifted and cosine is sine shifted. So it makes that sinusoidal curve. Hang on, I need to drink water. All right, so they want us to label these different points. Well, if it took 30 minutes to get back to the top, then that means down here, this is going to be h of 15. And how high is that? Well, the middle is 120, and now we are 8 inches less than that middle line. Um, so 120 minus 8 is 112 inches above the ground. And then where are we here? Well, so... If this was, if it took 15 minutes to get all the way there, we want half of that 15 minutes. So this right here is going to be h of 7.5, and that's going to be equal, that midline happens at 120. And then over here, okay, so 7.15, 7 7.5 minutes past 15 minutes, does that make sense, is 22.5. All right, this is h of 22.5, and that will also be equal to 120. So now we need to take this information and come down and put it on this graph. So, I'm sorry, it's not quite big enough of a window for you, but I think you, we get the idea. So, I would say that F is the point um, 0, 128, which came from here. Either way, you want to write it. And then G is when we get to, G here is when we get to this midline here. So, this would be, I would call G the point one, uh, 7.5, 120. That's where I would have got the one. J happens um, at the very bottom here. So J at the bottom is J here. That is the point 15, 112. K is when we get back to that midline, which was at 22 and a half min minutes. Yes. And then the, the last one, P, we get back up to the top at 30 minutes into this whole activity, and we are 128 inches off the ground. Okay, continuing on. This is fun. Okay, continuing on. We, they're telling us the t-coordinate of G is t1. Okay, so here's t1. And they're telling us the t-coordinate of, of J is t2. Okay, so here's t2. On the interval t1 to t2, the, what is the, what, which of the following is true about H? Um, it's positive. Okay, so keep in mind, all of these values, um, our clock, our minute hand, never goes in my... I mean, the way I interpret this problem is that our minute hand lives between 128 and 112 inches. It's never lower. It, it, will, it will get as low. The end of that minute hand will get as low as 120 
I lied, 112 inches, but it doesn't go any lower than that. So in my opinion, I'm, I'm interpreting this to say that my H values, my Y values will always be positive because they're gonna live between 112 and 128 inches above the ground, and those are both positive numbers. Um, so let's that we can just immediately get rid of those negative values. So now what's happening here? Well, our values are decreasing. So it's positive and decreasing. That's how I answer that question. I did not check an answer key, but that's what I and how I interpret that. Okay, describe how the rate of change of h is changing over the interval. Okay, so from here to here, notice when we talk about the what is the rate of change doing? So is the, the average rate of change is increasing on this interval. The average rate of change is decreasing on that interval. Um, what's happening is my, my average rate of change is negative, but it gets less negative through that process. Um, and so when you go from something negative to something less negative, your values are increasing. If I owe you $10, and now I, if I used to owe you $10, and now, and then I go to owing you $8, and then I go to owing you $6, I'm making up numbers, um, and then I go to owe you $4, what I, my, um, the amount, how do I want to say this? The amount of money I have is increasing, even though I'm still negative? Uh, anyway, it's kind of confusing, but, okay, another way to think about this is you may remember that any time we're concave up, the average rate of change is increasing. So there we go. Describe how the rate of change is changing. Um, the average rate of change is increasing on that interval. All right, that was fun. Uh, go practice and well, subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel. That'd be great. All right, have a great day.